Hey everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we're going to take a look at a plugin that was recently released from Brainworks through Plugin Alliance and that is the Amec Mastering Compressor which is of course based upon a GML 8900 Mastering Compressor. Uh, this compressor is really unique because it has multiple true RMS detectors for slow, fast, and peak that allow the compressor to respond intelligently to signal changes in the same sort of logarithmic way as the human ear allowing for natural transparent compression. So this is not really a character compressor as much as it is a transparent dynamics controlling compressor. The soft setting has program dependent ratio, kind of like a tube compressor, but it's much more transparent than a tube compressor. And then other settings have harder knees for more snappy compression characteristics. It does have some really unique and different controls from many other compressors. So we're going to dive in and go over those controls in detail. If you just want to hear how it sounds, take a look at the timestamp down in the description and jump right to the audio examples. But let's get right into these controls. First of all, we got a couple of buttons here. Channel in or out puts the compressor in or out. We've got a button for external side change to trigger the compression. And right below that, we've got our threshold knob. And right away, this is kind of unique because it's different when it's in soft versus hard knee mode. When in hard knee mode, it behaves like a gain control pushing into a static threshold, sort of like an 1176 input knob pushing into that static threshold. But when it's in soft knee mode, and that's when that ratio knob right here is fully counterclockwise, the threshold lowers the level where the soft knee curve departs from that one-to-one -one characteristic, resulting in more compression at lower levels. So it sort of works like a traditional threshold in that way. The timing knob right here decides the length of the RMS detector's averaging window, changing both the attack and release times together. So as you push this up clockwise, you get faster attack and release times. Counterclockwise is slower attack and release times. The knob right below, release hysteresis, that wires the fast RMS detector into the slow one at the threshold set by this specific control, the hysteresis control. So the attack and release times are for the fast detector above the setting of the threshold and for the slow detector below the setting of the threshold. It's basically a dual attack and release timing similar to auto release setting on a lot of other compressors. The fast knob right next to that controls the level of the fast RMS detector. As you move it higher with clockwise knob movement here, it gradually overtakes the slow detector and takes priority in the overall gain reduction. And the peak knob right above that does the same thing. As you push it clockwise, the peak detector takes priority. And this one has an instantaneous attack and a longer static release time. We've got an output control, of course, like most compressors. The headroom knob right next to it allows for more or less gain reduction without changing any other settings. This is great for tailoring presets to your material without changing any other control. So if you choose a preset that you really like, but you're not getting the gain reduction you want, or you're getting too much gain reduction, you can just move the headroom knob and not change any other controls. The ratio knob, as I mentioned earlier, if it's fully counterclockwise is in soft knee mode, which is around three to one with peaks around six to one or even 10 to one at lower threshold settings and loud input signals. And of course, if you move it past that soft ratio, you get our typical ratios all the way up to infinity limiting. Now we were looking just on the left side of the plugin over here. The right side is the exact same thing. If you have those two linked as they are now, you move one control, it moves the other side. But we can control the left and right channels separately if we want to, or even do mid side processing with these two sides. The bottom panel we have here are a lot of typical Brainworks controls. We've got input gain and output gain. We've got a couple of meters in the far left and right. We've got that Brainworks tolerance modeling technology where the channels are slightly different from each other. We've got a mono maker, stereo width control, we can set up the mid side here. We can link the parameters here. And we've got this one unique control, the VCA clip, which models the soft clipping of the VCA at higher signal levels. You wanna aim for mostly green and yellow LED light up here on your peaks with occasional red on the very highest peaks. You get a little LED meter right there. Jumping back up to the main controls right in between the left and right channels, we've got our side chain link amount knob right here in the center. So instead of having only linked and unlinked controls, this knob allows you to set any percentage in between. So both channels have either the same gain reduction or different amounts depending on the setting here. You also have a button right below for max or average setting. When it's set at 100% linked, the compressor will compress both channels as much as the highest amount of either channel when it's in max mode. And then if you switch it over to average mode, you get the average gain reduction between the two channels. And that allows for smoother compression when there are louder peaks only on one channel. So you're not bringing the whole signal down when you get a loud peak on the left or the right or the mid or side signal. We've got a pretty in-depth side chain filter module right here in the middle with all the EQ settings to control the signal going into the detector circuit. This ambience button right in the center sends the difference of the compressed material to the output so you can hear the timing more clearly or adjust the threshold in detail. 
auto listen button here in the sidechain section allows you to listen to the sidechain EQ when you're making adjustments. And the latch listen button right over here sends that sidechain signal to the output of the plugin until you turn it off. So if you hit this and you start messing with this EQ, you'll hear the results of that EQ rather than not hearing it and just having it be applied to the detector circuit. There's a pretty unique level meter here on top, which makes it easy to find unity gain settings, which is really nice. I forgot to mention this ratio LED right below the ratio knob right down here. This is only active when you're in soft knee mode. The green LED lights up as soon as the compressor moves above that one to one setting, yellow at about four to one and red at about 20 to one. So it's showing you how that ratio is changing when you're in soft knee mode. You've also got this little set of LEDs here, PFS, and those light up according to whatever the current highest detector is above the threshold, where there's the fast detector, or the peak detector, or the slow detector. The detector activity monitor right here in the middle plots the output of the three RMS detectors to visualize their timing and relative levels. This is like a plug-in only feature, which is really cool. It also includes the threshold indicator line, which you can see right in the middle here. And once I start playing some audio through it, you'll see how this uh, detector activity monitor looks. At the very top bar, we've got our typical Brainworks controls our plug-in on and off button, our GUI size here. We've got undo, redo, four different states of the plugin can be saved. You can copy, paste, reset all the different settings here. The speed control is pretty unique. It controls the speed of the detector display right here. We've got solo mid, solo side. We can open or close different panels. And we've even got CVD accessible colors here if you need some help in that front with visualization. I'll go back to that standard setting for now. That pretty much covers it. I know there's a lot of controls right there, so let's jump right into hearing this thing in action. I'm going to play a bit of a mix with this plugin bypassed. It's a full mix that's been mixed already. I've got other processing on, but no mix bus compression right now. So this is being put on the stereo bus. Bypassed at first. Here's the raw mix. Now I'll engage the compressor. So I picked a preset here, mix bus aggressive and just level match to the original signal. Take a look at the detector's activity monitor and you'll see how the compression is reacting to the percussion mostly. Now I'm going to push up this fast detector circuit level control and you'll see how a different type of compression takes over as I push it up, takes priority. So you get a little bit more gain reduction, some snap out of those transients. I'll bring that down and I'll use the peak one. And you can pretty much crush the transient right out of the track with this peak control. Listen to how the snare and kick, that initial transient, gets totally softened from this. It almost has the effect of kind of transparently turning down those two elements in the mix without going to the channel controls at all in the mix itself. So right off the bat, you can tell this plugin gives you a ton of dynamic flexibility by having those three interacting detectors. Let's try another preset here. I'm going to move to Mix Bus Gentle Fader. There is a little bit of stereo width on this one, so it's going to sound different if I bypass it on and off. Let's try to level match it first. That's pretty close. I'm going to turn off the stereo width so we're not being fooled by that and just bypass this on and off as it plays, starting with the compressor on. And some of that sort of stereo spread stuff might be coming from this TMT section. So I'm going to turn that off, put it in digital mode where both the left and right sides are the same and see if that makes a difference. Sweet 
really just clamps down on the drums. Definitely a difference in the stereo image when you turn off the tolerance modeling technology there. Let's check it out on some individual instrument buses next. So now we've got the plugin on a drums bus. Here it is with the plugin bypass. And I picked a preset called Live Drums Parallel Crush. I'm going to gauge the plugin and the mix knobs all the way at zero right now. I'll just kind of dial it in until we get that parallel sound that we want. Now I'll bypass it on and off as it plays, starting off. So you can definitely crush things with this. If we jack this up to 100%, we get this sound. It kind of has the gain reduction characteristics of really heavy compression without all the distorted trash you might get by like slamming an 1176 or something like that. So even though it's really clamping down, it's more transparent than some other compressors in doing that same job. Now let's check it out on a guitar bus here. And I picked a guitar preset. I'm going to start with the plug-in off first, and then we'll jump in and engage it. And here it is with the compression. Just nice, transparent level control. One last thing, let's try it out on a piano part here, and we're going to start with the compressor bypassed at first. And we've got this setting called Piano Aggressive. Here we go. I'm going to bring down that threshold a bit more. So just a slight change to the sound there. And you can see by the graph, we're not getting a whole lot of gain reduction. It's a pretty soft piano part to begin with. But overall, I'm really impressed with how the Amic Mastering Compressor is giving so much flexibility in controlling the dynamics of either the entire mix or each individual bus. So highly recommended the Amic Mastering Compressor from Brainworks and Plugin Alliance based upon the classic GML 8900 Mastering Compressor. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next, and I'll see you in the next one.